This is my very first Marvel comic book, Incredible Hulk number 26. I uh, co-wrote it with Paul Jenkins. And it's a one, little one-issue tale about uh, a Z-list supervillain uh, in Wisconsin knocking off liquor stores and stuff when the Hulk <laughs> happens through. I said a lot of my comics in Wisconsin because I grew up there. I made sure that the town I grew up in was name-checked in my first book. Hi, my name is Frick Weber. I'm the author of The Field on the Edge of the Woods and Earthlings. And if you're a fan of art, comics, or maybe even trying to break into comics, this video series is for you. Uh, while some of the names you might not recognize, I'm sure you'll recognize almost all of the stories and the characters. I'd like to thank my day job for footing the bill with the resources of it, and I'd also like to thank the digital publisher, Cloud9 Comics, for making it so we're able to create these videos and share them with you for free. Hope you enjoy. What's your story, and how did you get into comics? Well, that's kind of a long story. How much time do you have? What's my story? <coughs> well, how did I get into comics, or oh, just the industry? All right. Um, well, um, it, it's not all that exciting. I don't know what version I told you before. Well, I lucked out. I mean, I, I, I tried, as a lot of artists do, you know, showing your work at, uh, at conventions to different artists. And you know, I wrote a Spider-Man pitch at 14, sent it to Marvel, got a rejection letter. Uh, kept doing that in my 20s, early 20s, and um, soon realized that really I'm not getting anywhere because they don't know whether or not I can write. Ooh, I tried for years to get into comics through comic strips, but... Um, that never really panned out for me. And then I discovered the independent comics movement. If I'm not gonna write about somebody else's characters, what am I gonna write about? And that's when I came up with the idea for The Waiting Place, which is a teen drama about kids growing up in a dead-end town, which, you know, I was living in a small town in Wisconsin and was kinda itching to get out of there. And so I wrote about that, uh, found artists for it, and uh, we did the first issue together. We decided, you know, we may not get published. If we get published, we may, may not make a single penny, but we're gonna do it. Once I started making efforts towards that, boy, everything just kind of clicked for me. Which is funny because, you know, I banged my head against the wall on comic strips for five years before I got into comic books. The minute I came to comic books, doors opened. It's funny, when you do the right thing, it just kind of works. You never know who's watching your stuff, who's looking at your material. The important thing is to do your best work now, okay, and work hard to take and get it as far out there and far reaching as you possibly can. We only sold a thousand copies an issue, but one of those readers was an editor at Marvel, and he took notice of me and, and uh, wound up starting to do some work uh, for Marvel, and it all kind of snowballed from there. Well, I was a pop artist for many years and decided to take a break and do something I really wanted to do. And of course, that was comics. I've loved them. My dad used to bribe me to sit still for uh, haircuts. So he said, if you sit still, you get comics. So he's the guy who turned me into a junkie. You know. So I took a year off. Uh, I came up with a character called Mr. Beat, a little beatnik character. A couple years later, I get a phone call from the people over at uh, Bongo Comics for The Simpsons. One thing leads to the other. While I was in Saudi Arabia, I had um, my friends and I put together an underground newspaper called The Camel Crack. We put out several issues, and it was near time for me to uh, re-enlist. So I got out, and a year later, I remembered I had wanted to be a comic book artist. So I went to the bookstore and bought a book or two on how to draw comics. And also, thanks to Anthony Robbins speaking about um, on the, you know, those infomercials about, uh, you know, if someone can do something in uh, four years of college, you can do it in four months. Four months later, I was a comic book artist. I went up to New York with my artwork, showed Neil Adams and several other people, and ended up doing Vampirella and working for Neil. I had shown my artwork to many artists. Among them was an artist named Rich Buckler, who after I had not been able to, uh, to break it on my own, I was working at a, as a bank right after uh, high school, he called me up and said he needed an assistant. I completed my two years at the Art Institute and uh, showed my samples to uh, the, the then editor-in-chief uh, when he was at a local shop appearance. And he seemed to like the stuff enough that he's, uh, I sent it on to New York. And it sat in a drawer for a year with a bunch of other submissions until they needed somebody. Uh, they needed a fill-in issue and they went and looked through the drawer to see who was there. And I, a year later, got a call from uh, from a couple of editors at Marvel asking if I was interested, and I absolutely was. And that put my foot in the door that after about a, six, a little over a six-month period working with Rich as an assistant, 
there were some books that Richard suffered either falling behind schedule or other books that people had seen me in the offices and they thought maybe it would we need an, a, a desperate replacement artist at this point. And they recognized my work, offered it to me, and from that point on I was working steady because I was fast at that time and I was hungry, so I wanted to do everything. So for the first year or two, I uh, worked at an animation studio during the day, a uh, local animation studio, and, uh, and then did my Marvel work at night. At one point I was doing two books a month for Marvel and working at the animation studio, so that was a little ridiculous. Within a year's time I was drawing the Fantastic Four and the Avengers, two of their top books because so many artists didn't want to draw team books and I hungered for team books. So I, I created a niche for myself. And uh, at the point that I was offered Spider-Man, I decided it's good by, about as safe as it was going to get to make the jump to full-time comics. And that's what I did. And that's been 20 some years ago now, I get No, oh, good God, I don't know. That, I, 80, I think the first issue was out in 83. So how many years ago is that? I draw, I don't do math. When I was at uh, Bucknell, I met uh, Glenn Herdling, a great friend of mine, great guy. He double majored in English and psychology. He lived in New Jersey, and after uh, college graduating, he got a job at Marvel Comics. My first engineering job was in New Jersey, and his family graciously put me up for a few months until I got on my feet. And I uh, maintained a, a great friendship with Glenn, and he would take my artwork in for me uh, to Marvel to get professional critiques. After a few years of critiques and practicing and, and, and trying and uh, a couple failures with independent publishers, I started getting very small uh, assignments from different editors at Marvel, starting with Glenn and Custom Comics and then uh, a few other editors in the actual uh, um, you know, superhero line of, of books. Once uh, Pat Garrahy, who was Ralph Macchio's assistant editor, offered me a, a trial run on the monthly Daredevil series. I quit my engineering job and uh, went for it and uh, haven't looked back since. The way it all came together was pretty um, happenstance. I don't know, it's, that is a long story. But I went to LA to study computer animation and Top Cow came to the school I went to looking for artists. And of the 150 people I tried out, I was the only person they ended up you know, taking back with them. Michael Turner uh, hired me. I started out as his as background assistant actually did more in the backgrounds, but I started out as his just pencil assistant on Fathom, and I've been doing it ever since. After drawing on every sheet of homework paper I had all through elementary, middle, and high school, I went to art school, um, started sending out samples to any comic book company that I could come up with, got my share of rejection letters. A company called uh, Malibu Comics uh, gave me my first job drawing a book called Stealth Force. I went on to Continue to work for Malibu, work for Eternity Comics, some of the smaller black and white publishers at the time, and still send out work. Uh, I had shown my work to a gentleman named Ron Friends, who uh, actually liked it and was able to show it to some editors at Marvel. At one point, they needed a, uh, an artist for a story called Tales of Asgard, which were backup stories in the Thor uh, comic book that Ron was drawing. Um, they hired me to do those stories, and that's just kind of how I got in uh, into Marvel. I've been very fortunate. I've, you know, endeavored to make my deadlines and work work and play well with others, and and uh, you know, I've I've had a, a heck of a career. So, uh, what else do you need to know? Well, thanks for watching. If you get a chance, we'd love to hear what you think. Please comment on the video, or you can find us three different ways on Facebook. And if you did like it, please share it with a friend. And if you have any ideas for questions that you'd like us to, to ask artists for future videos, please let us know. And again, thanks to Cloud9 Comics for footing the bill. Bye.